What kind of climbing harness do you take on a ski expedition where you need to be tied in and then roped up to a guide, a lead, in the middle of the rope, as an anchor, whatever? Which harness do you take and why do you take that? So I'm going to talk about the harness that I took on my Greenland expedition just to show you what it's like and why I chose this. Now I've got all sorts of different expedition harnesses, I've got my climbing gear and all that, but I chose this ultralight black diamond cool wire harness for a couple of reasons. One, it's ultralight. This thing is super, super light. I mean, it's just basically a very expensive strap and with leg loops, but it does have a proper loop here. So the lightness is a huge factor. Being able to handle this harness in the cold, it's okay. So when I loop this through and do the classic double back maneuver, remember to always double back, it handled pretty well in the cold. It wasn't too bad at all. Easy to lock and very safe. So that was a good benefit. As you'll notice here, I've got these loops of paracord and you think, geez, what the heck is this all about? Well, the climbing loops from everything that I've seen with people online, the climbing loops tend to tear out after a while. So that is a failing of the Black Diamond Cool Wire Harness, which is expensive, but like all outdoor gear it is. So I just simply on the gear loops that are meant, I've got the plastic carabiners that hook through these things for gear, but with my sleds here i did not want to have those loops when we were worried about crevasses hanging out they're basically big old plastic carabiners i spent like 40 bucks on the thing but i realized over time that it was a problem with my harness so i just did the old paracord thing looped it through so they're completely compressible don't get in the way of my other harness and that works pretty well it has the classic drop cords in the back and it just literally has bungee cords. So if you need to call in nature, you can unhook this bad boy, clip it out, get it done, and then clip it back. And that's no big deal. So that's a very nice feature. In the front is the most critical feature of the climbing harness for winter travel is this little buckle that unclips and it opens the leg loop so you can clip and then put it back together. That way you don't have to take off your pants, your boots. That's a big, big thing. So let me actually show you how this climbing harness works and how much I love it. And I'm gonna tell you at the end of the video, it's major, major weakness is why, well, everything has its price. So I'm gonna unclip this and as you see, it's gonna turn into a bit of a mess. This is a bit of a battle. So I'm gonna stand back here so you can watch me put this climbing harness on. Get my wireless mic all hooked up here. Hopefully I don't damage it. You know these microphones are crazy expensive. It's pretty funny. So I've got this put around my waist. And always make sure to have at least four inches or 12 centimeters of tail on your harness. That is a huge thing if you don't want to die. Okay, so I've got that hooked up there. And then I clip around my leg loops here. Okay, don't damage the microphone. Okay, clip one. And I can put this over a huge amount of clothing. I mean, there's like eight inches of tail here. Two, and then the belay harness, oops, <laughs> I do this every time, I forget about that, is the waist belt has to be passed through the belay loop to hold this thing together. And every time I would forget that because I'm so busy even focused on doing my video now, it's an easy mistake to make. That's why I try and be authentic in my videos to show you my mistakes and to be a little more real. <laughs> no one's perfect. And trust me, I'm not either. And I just want to show you these experiences. So as you can see here, I've got the harness, it's got the leg loops and it works super well. I didn't have to take off my boots. I didn't have to slip it over my shoes. I can wear my big Malay crazy stuff, crampons, skis. I can put this harness on with skis on, so no problem getting it on. It's a pretty sweet setup. And then the same thing here, to take it off, I just simply push the strap through, and I'm gonna show you the weakness, so hang on. This is a critical, critical thing to consider of the Coolwar and uh, Petzl's ultralight harnesses and harnesses 
like this. It's a big factor. So let me show you here. The big weakness of these harnesses is the leg loop. And you say, what? Like, yeah, that's a big deal. So if you happen to fall, this is not meant for general climbing. And I mean like, do not use this for general climbing because these leg loops are simply held together by nylon clips that can break. So if you take a big old whipper of a fall and these load these up, they're going to snap. This is not a harness for regular climbing. This is only a harness meant for ski mountaineering or glacier travel where lightness is everything while still being safe. But other than that, this is the one big failing of this type of harness is this. Petzl has the same problem. Everybody has the same problem. And you trade that breakability versus having to sit down and put on a harness. I've done them on Denali several times. I hated it. That's why I finally broke down and brought, bought an ultralight glacier travel harness and it made my life all the better. So I could just stand up, have my park on, tie this thing in and it works super well. So let me show you how this, how much this harness weighs. I mean, it, you can literally crush this thing and stuff it into a Nalgene. I and mean, it's great. Let me see if I can get a good weight here. All right, uh, come on. This is not easy, trust me. Hold, okay. And the Black Diamond Cool War Harness weighs 9.3 ounces, or for my Graham's friends, uh, was that? There you go, 284, or no, 264 grams. So extremely light. This is about as light as harnesses come. The Petzl version might be a little bit lighter, but I just preferred the design of the Black Diamond Cool War a bit more. So if you are doing ski up expedition, glacier travel, roping in where a fall is unlikely, but possible, this is a great choice. If you're gonna fall a lot more, doing heavier duty climbing, then you're going to want to have a heavier duty harness without leg loops or full strap through rather than clip leg loops. These are only meant for emergency glacier travel, any sort of continuous climbing. These are not a good choice where potentially multiple falls are possible. Please check out my book and you learn about more about this. Two Friends and a Polar Bear and the Motivated Amateur's Guide to Winter Camping. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.